Hey guys, welcome to Pine Vinyl. You look really familiar. Do I know you guys? Uh, I don't know. Do you? Man, this is weird. I know you. I mean, like, maybe when you were younger? Did we know each other in high school, or? I don't think so. Man, this is going to drive me nuts. Where's your metal section? Yeah, it's right over there. How do I know you guys? What? <sighs> I'm bored. Oh, let's play the celebrity look like him. All right, I already got it. Ed O'Neill, Married to Children Arrow. Damn, that's a good one. All right, I'll give you a seven. All right. Uh... Ooh, James Gang Era Joe Walsh. <sighs> Name an actual celebrity. I don't have no fucking clue what he looks like. He looks like that. Well, if you just, you're being fancy again. You're always fancy with this shit. Just say he looks like James Franco. Give me an extra. Fine pump. then. What do you got? All right. Oh, there. Meg Ryan pre-lip pump facelift. Ugh. That's a that's a nine. No, that's a ten. You won't beat it. Yeah, I will. Uh, oh, oh yeah. Well, guess what? I what? spotted the all-time biggest celebrity ever. Who? 1980s big hair Oprah. You know, like when she was really, really fat. But... What the fuck? Shit. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll give you a five. <laughs> hey, guys. Did you hear about Paul Walker? Whoa, whoa. What do you... Put the gun down, man. Not today. We will not be doing P-Walk jokes today. You hear me? I wasn't gonna. I was just saying. Jeez. Come on, DJ, you know how much Ellis loves Paul Walker. P-Walk. Yeah, P-Walk, whatever. You gotta put down the pellet gun now, though. Come on. That's a pellet gun? Yeah, it was mine when I was a kid. Well, in that case, hey guys, did you hear Paul Walker died? I heard, I heard they're replacing him with a box of roofing nails. Man, was that worth it? Roofing nails? I mean... If you're going to be in bad taste, at least have a zinger like, uh, I don't know. How about, hey, Paul Walker, Zach Morris called. He said, Ooh. I'll take the money and the respect. Hey, Rugburn, are you okay? Yeah, just knocked out a little bit. Oh, what happened? Oh, did he steal my wallet? Hey, Ellis, this is, it's enough, all right? He's just an actor, okay? He's just an actor. You don't steal my damn money, okay? Get over it. God. of the most beautiful and successful celebrity mom goes to... Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, whoa. I think I'll write a song about this. No, you won't. Burn out Benny. Do you still have those time travel pills? Yeah, yeah, man. We, what's the urgency? We need to go back to tomorrow. We have to save Philip Seymour Hoffman. Is he the googly-eyed one? No, nah, man, that's Steve Buscemi. I thought the same thing, though. I'm more of a Buscemi guy myself. Well, you're an idiot. Hoffman destroys Buscemi. Why are you even going back in time with me if you don't even respect him? You know those time travel pills don't really work, right? Like, time travel's not even a possibility. At all. Well, it's worth a shot, right? Right? Philip Seymour Hoffman can't be dead. Not a talent like that. Not by the deadly fingers of stupid heroin. Damn you, heroin. You took an angel from us. A big, furry, blonde angel. So yes, the time travel pills have to work. It may not make any sense, but neither does living in a world where Philip Seymour Hoffman isn't sharing his God-given gift. He can't be dead. You understand? No, not really. Remember when Paul Walker died? Remember how devastated you were? Miss you every day, brah. Every day. Yeah, exactly. So if you knew that there was even a slim possibility of saving him from that car wreck, wouldn't you roll the dice? I'm here because those pills get me high as a motherfucker. All right, whatever. Let's go back in time and save Philip Seymour Hoffman. I'll just get fucked up for a little while. Stop being a dick about this. <laughs> It worked. We're in New York. The day of the Super Bowl. This is his building. Let's sneak in. Yeah, fucking Broncos. We're gonna fuck them Seahawks up tonight. Trust me. You do not want to go into that stadium. 
You will not lock what you see. Safety. Oh my god. The black guy from Love Boat was right. Philip Seymour Hoffman, don't do it. Well, what's the meaning of this? We're here to save you. I'm Rugburn, that's Ellis. We're huge fans. We both agree you're easily the top five best actor of all time. Ooh, I don't know about top five. But your friend doesn't think I'm very good? He's an idiot. He's a Buscemi guy. Oh, f fuck Steve Buscemi. I was so much better than him and Lebowski. Wasn't I? You're damn right you were. You were always the best actor in every movie you were ever in. Especially along came Pauly. Oh, oh, right, yeah. I'm sorry about that one. It's okay. The sharding scene actually made me smile. You always make me smile, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh, thanks. I needed that. I don't need to inject this stupid old heroin anymore. My new addiction is making people smile. Starting now. <laughs> it's working, Philip. It's working on me. Now go be great, okay? Go be, go be great. Uh I think the pills wore off. Yeah, I know. You doing okay? You alright? Just can't believe he's actually gone. I miss him. I didn't even know him. Yeah, I know. I still don't think he's top five best actors, though. Shut up. Bashemi. <sighs> Fucking asshole. Well, look at who we have here, the king, Mr. LeBron James. Welcome to Pine Vinyl. Who is he? He is the greatest basketball player since Michael Jordan. Well, some would say better, but whatever. Well, those people work for ESPN, so they don't really count seeing that your balls are in their mouth. Wow, you sound awesome. Did you play in the 1970s? 70s? I'm only 30 years old. No. You look 50. Uh, so what brings you to our fine shop this afternoon? Well, I was debating between two albums. Either the old school Commodore's album Night Shift, or Sam Smith's In the Lonely Hour. Cool. Which one you pick? Hello? Are you still there? Sir? I mean, your majesty? Check my Twitter account. There you will learn my decision. Uh, okay. Checking it. Alright, all I see is a link. Click the link. Okay. The page is loading. Yeah, we steal the Wi-Fi from the coffee shop next door, so it's real hit and miss. But, uh, hey, did you ever see the magic bird? Dude, I told you. That's not a thing. Don't do this. Don't embarrass yourself. Don't talk about basketball. Ever. Yeah, fine. Did it load yet? No, it's still spinning around. Oh, that fucking wheel. Uh, King? King James, uh, do you think you could touch the ceiling right now? You just put your hand up and just touch it? If you tried, could you do it? God, I wish I could do that. Dude, shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay. Sup, fools? LeBron, let's go to Chipotle. Come on, bruh. Damn it, Drake. I told you to stop following me. Don't be like that, bruh. Please. Please, LeBron, please. Look at me. LeBron, look at me. We still tight, right? Come on, dog, please. Let me be with you. Let me be with you. <laughs> you look Canadian. All right, that page loaded. All right, what do we got? Holy shit, it's a 10-paragraph essay. Do I have to read all of this? Yes. Uh, all right, so... My heart, my heavy heart is still okay. I don't believe that. Oh, here we go. All right. So after some heavy soul searching, while walking along the lonely Mississippi, watching the Blue Jays mating on a nearby phone line, I have a, what the fuck was that? I have officially decided to go old school. I select the Commodores as the album I'd like to purchase. Well, guess what? We don't have that album, so you're going to have to have the other one. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Cool. All right. Let me bag this up for you. You want paper or plastic? Click the link. Can I ask you a personal question? No. When you wipe, do you go front to back or back to front? Uh, I go front to back. No. Okay. Why do you ask? Because I go back to front. 
Man, you are a nasty ass, aren't you? I always forget every time I try to reverse Holy it. shit, look who it is, Bill fucking Murphy. Welcome to Pond Vine. Sir, it is such an honor. Your portrayal of FDR in Hyde Park on Hudson was enlightening. Yeah, I ain't seen that shit, but what about Bob? <laughs> what about Bob? Bill fucking Murphy. It's a really great place that you have here. Thanks. Uh, anything you want in the store is yours, free of charge. Well, so some guy outside gave me some mushrooms. Did you eat them? Yes, I did. Bill fucking Murray. Can I give you boys some advice? Of course, Mr. Murray. You know, before you have kids with that, you know, with the woman that you love, you find the woman, you know, you're happy, you know, before you have kids, get a dog. You know, get a dog and just see how it goes, you know? Okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Whoa. Where, where'd he go? Did he vanish? Nope. He's hiding behind that plane. <laughs> Bill fucking murder. No way. Bill fucking Murray in my bathroom. This is the coolest day ever. Well, you know, next time you're in the south of France, stop by the bookshop called Le Rose de Vent. Look behind the gold-covered globe and turn the key on the, in, the, in, the, in the door thing there. You know, and then you'll understand. Will I? Oh, yeah. Bill fucking Murray. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, my God. That's Bill Murray's grandpa. What you doing here, Bill fucking Murray? When making love, remember this. That smell is the most intoxicating that of any other sense. You know, look at look at her body with your nostrils, and you and give her and give her your chosen aroma. You know. What you saying? You saying like a lot of candle, or do you want me to like fart on her? Yeah. Yeah, what? Fart on her? Yes. Do it. I like it. All right, fuck it. Ah, uh, do it more. Nah, I'm not into this. Oh yeah. And you're sure there's no onions? At, uh, huh? If your boat that you're riding in through life is sinking, bring a bucket. Have a bucket and be prepared. You know, hey, there's onions all over this thing. Come on. The fuck, man? Try wiping sideways. No, that's completely stupid. And this is weird. No. Hey, Ellis. Uh, so you want to go see Birdman at the Uptown Theater on Hennepin Avenue, just across from the McDonald's at 4.30 sharp? Yes, that sounds like a good plan, Rob Bird. All right, sounds good. I will see you there. Hey, boys. Breeze! Yes, it worked. Wait a goddamn second. Well, shit, that's Bill fucking Murray. Holy, this is the best day of my life. Hey, Bill, uh... You want to hold my gun? Yes, I do. God damn it. Where to now, boys? Bill Murray's a motherfucking crazy person. You know, that ain't fucking right. Just roaming the country. Just doing whatever the fuck you want to do all the time. Right? He's got no woman. Obviously, he's got no woman telling him what to do. Just roaming around. That ain't fair. What if I want to play kickball with some white people? You know, they don't let me do that shit. There, there ain't no you know, black equivalent to Bill Murray, is there? You don't see Eddie Murphy fucking, you know, breaking up some bachelor party, giving out some weird-ass advice, right? Could do that. I suppose he could do that. Martin, maybe Martin Lawrence, I suppose, could maybe do that. Not a lot of people, not everybody knows Martin, though, you know. You know, pretty much just black people, you know. Snoop Dogg. The black equivalent of Bill Murray would be Snoop Dogg, wouldn't he? Wouldn't he be? What the fuck do you know about Snoop Dogg? Well, I know that if I saw him on the side of the road, I would definitely want to hang out with him. Like, get high with him, basically. You couldn't get high with Snoop Dogg. You couldn't handle it. You could fuck, you would, you would be wrong. What, what did that mean? I'm not saying I could hang out with Snoop Dogg. I'm just saying that he would be an equivalent. You're looking for an, an equivalent to Bill, to Bill Murray. Like a black Bill Murray. That'd be Snoop Dogg, wouldn't it? Why are you getting all racist? Who are you talking about, black Bill Murray? Shut the fuck up. Give me back my letter. Okay. We are now joined by two friends from Minneapolis named Alice Griggs and James Rugburn. 
They co-own a record shop in Minneapolis called Pine Vinyl. Co-own. That's what he said. So, thank you so much for coming on the show. So amazing. Anyway, do you guys like Tom Petty? Tom Petty? Oh, uh, yeah. He's my number three favorite artist of all time. Why? Is he here? Oh, God damn it. Oh, uh, yeah. He's here. <laughs> She's good. She's good. Girl. Love your mouth. Love you. Uh, just kidding, guys. It was just me. What'd you think? I don't know. I'm assuming that was supposed to be Tom Petty. Yeah, it was supposed to be Tom Petty. <laughs> that was pretty spot on, right? I nailed it. I nailed it. Is it cool if I go hang out in that black people section? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Sup, fellas? Who's got some weed? Okay, uh, so Mr. Rugburn, do you- Hey, Jimmy. You want to hear a joke? Uh, yeah, sure. How many roots does it take to roll a joint? <laughs> Just takes one root. That creepy motherfucker playing the triangle. Ding! Hey, let me play drums next. So, Rugburn, do you know why we invite you to the show? Nope. Okay, awesome. Well, our team scoured the internet and searched every Jimmy Fallon-related article we could find. We tallied up all the awesome comments and tweets and shoutouts, and you know what we discovered? Nope. Everybody in America loves me. <laughs> Not one person has said anything negative or mean in reference to me, Jimmy Fallon. Okay. That was until we saw this little tweet. Not saying Jimmy Fallon is mentally retarded, but anyone who laughs that much at nothing should at least be tested. Hashtag who's on Letterman. Hashtag dork. Do you remember writing that tweet? Uh, yeah, I do. I think that was when you were throwing a big ball at Julie Roberts' face for like 10 minutes. Oh, that's our great game, Face Balls. <laughs> hey, do you want to play a game right now? Let's go viral. <sighs> hey, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. Here's another joke. What do you get when you put a Jimmy Fallon and a Queen Latifah in a taxi cab together? <laughs> the end of a movie career. <laughs> Fever pitch? Come on, enough of that shit. Alright, this one is called Squirt Party. We each have squirt guns. And while well, the opponent bounces on the trampoline here, the other tries to squirt the other's pants, you know, right in the crotch, so it looks like their pants got wet. They're, they peed their pants. You see what I'm talking about, Johnny? It's goddamn amateur hour. What was that? <laughs> Good one, Johnny. Now that is a joke. Yes, God damn it. There's a fire God damn it. Starting. Oh, God damn it. See ya. Oh, I had such a good time with her and her. She was so full of her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, she was cool. Whatever. Oh, God damn it. Okay, hey, did you hear about Bill Cosby? No, what? what Bill Cosby, uh, yeah. What's he complaining about? Yeah, I guess he's been giving, giving roofies to girls. Three well, girls. And, the, and then he's been doing stuff to them. Well, that's just filthy. Yeah, Bill it? Cosby. Can you believe no, that? No, I cannot. I can't believe that. Bill Cosby goofing around with girls? I guess they all said he'd give, he would give them some pill. Then no. they just go down. Do and they do. Yeah. Oh, that is no up. Uh, he's, been, he's been pretty goofy. Yeah, he's pretty he's pretty goofy. Pretty goofy. Yeah. Yeah, he's Yeah, he's pretty goofy. Hey Ellis, what do you think of Macklemore? Hey Rugburn, we already did this. Did what? So you don't like Macklemore? Three weeks ago. Okay. We were at the Ghetto Taco John's on Maryland Avenue. Remember? Oh, right, yeah. I told you I never had potato lays before, and you told me to shut the fuck up. Why'd I tell you to shut the fuck up? Because you wanted to hear the song playing on the radio. Why'd I want to hear the song playing on the radio? Because you said it was the lamest shit you ever heard. And who was the oddest performer in the lamest shit I ever heard? It was Macklemore. And? And Ryan Lewis.
And then what happened? We ordered our food. What'd I get? Six pack and a pound, Dr. Pepper. What'd you get? Crunchy burrito, Mountain Dew, side of Olay's with extra seasoning. Then what happened? Two guys in ski masks whipped out some rifles. They told the register guy to open the till, but he couldn't. He was too scared, so the dude just like started beating on it. And it opened. He told everyone to get on the ground. But what did we do? We didn't do anything. We just ate our food. Why? We were way too high. We weren't even sure if it was actually happening. And was it really happening? No. And then what happened? We came back here, and I put on a Macklemore album. And then what happened? You told me to turn it off. I asked why, and you said you hated Macklemore so much that you were going to throw up a pound of potato lays. Then what happened? I thought it would be funny if I turned it up louder. Was it funny? No. Why? Because you threw up all over me. So to answer your question, no, I don't like Macklemore. He sucks. Do all black people think he sucks? Yes. Yes, they do. So there he is, Macaulay Cluckin. It's Culkin, not Cluckin. Ah, oh, no worries, Sausage Slice. It's cool. I was the biggest Home Alone fan in Minnesota. Trust me. When I was 10, I actually thought I saw you in a van at a pump and munch in Orlando. Was that you? In the van? Not sure, Cheesy Crust. Uh, I'm in a band now. We know. We booked you. We own this record shop, but I ain't never heard of you. What's up with the name Pizza Underground? We're a Velvet Underground cover band, Dipping Sauce. <laughs> in our vision, though, we mold our songs into a hot pie of magic. We search inside the aura and excavate the true meaning of each word. We find the results to be pepperoni perfect. What's he talk about? They take Velvet Underground songs and then make them about pizza. You got it, Anchovy. I had nightmares about you in that movie, The Good Son. Remember that shit? Throwing that dummy over the bridge? Man, you were a mean-ass kid, weren't you? That's the past, Canadian bacon. Pizza Underground is the future. Hey, Macaulay, are you ever going to act again? All I care about is pizza. No, seriously, though. You're an incredibly talented person. Why turn your back Look to Tino's party pizza. It's over, okay? Things change. People change. Breadsticks. Hold up. It says here on your uh, Wikipedia that you were banging Mila Kunis from the 70s show, you and her? How the fuck did you pull that off? <sighs> she must have loved my girl a fucking ton. Shut up, garlic sauce. All right, everybody out. Everybody just, just everybody out. I have a pizza cutter and I'll use it. Oh, why'd you bring up Mila Kunis, man? Obviously, that's what this whole pizza thing's about. He's heartbroken. I just need to be left alone, okay? Alone? Like, home alone? If you don't leave me alone, I'm gonna cut you into squares. Oh, gross. That's the worst way. So what's he doing in there? He's just running around screaming and eating pizza. Wait. Oh. Now he's snorting a line of coke. Nope. No, it was just Parmesan cheese. Pine vinyl. Hey, fuck we doing standing here? You'll see. There he is. Who? Eat shit and die, hipster. To my locks. So how much did all that shit cost? $7,000, not including the banana, so $7,001. Don't ruin this for me. <laughs> hey, you two! What, what the, the F? F? What year is it? Is this happening right now? I'm from 1985. My name is Marty. It's very important you tell me, what year is it? Would I sound like a total stoner if I told you I'm blanking? What the hell year is it? Was it 2013? 2014. Right? 2014. No, already? No, that, that can't be right. Well, uh, are you sure it's not 2015? I have the flux capacitor set. Only travels two years that end in five, so. Yep, yep. You know what? You are right. The re-release of Oasis of What's a Story Morning Glory came out 20-year anniversary. Who's Oasis? Um, the greatest rock and roll band of all time. Oasis. 
Right on. Well, I just came to check if everything was fixed since the whole sports book fiasco. Things don't look that futuristic, though. What are you wearing? A lock preserver or something? I fucked your mom's last night. Lorraine? What the fuck are you doing, man? Why are you trying to piss him off? When he gets mad, he turns into a werewolf. I'm gonna get a basketball game going. Different movie. You better watch yourself. Where are the flying cars? Not here. We got real little cars, though. Like, they're called smart cars. We also got seat warmers. Makes you feel like shit your pants. Okay, but what about holograms? Or did Jaws 19 ever come out? Jaws? No. They didn't make any more after the Jaws 3. They're making another Sharknado, though. Does that count? I don't know. Hollywood only makes movies with superheroes in them now. And that little black dwarf guy. Whoa! That's heavy! You know who else is heavy? He's yeah. not gonna turn into Teen Wolf, man. Please, tell me you have hoverboards. No, we don't. We have smartphones, though. What is a smartphone? Uh, you carry them around in your pocket wherever you go. Can't never not bring it. It, like, buzzes when people want to talk to you. You can go on Facebook and... Facebook? Yeah. Everyone you know is on there, and they post stuff about what they're doing, and you can like it or comment or it's dumb it's dumb it's all dumb the future sucks okay is that why you came here to tell us how shitty our life is no it's just uh, uh, uh. what's wrong with you i don't know it my muscles i'm just feeling shaky great scott get back in that car and go to 1985 before it's too late <laughs> In the next 30 years, we can find a cure for Parkinson's disease. Together, we can make sure no one else has to suffer a day longer. Visit MichaelJFox.org now and donate to the fight. With your help, we can make Parkinson's a thing of the past. Oh, we should have told him about email, right? Email's cool. Internet porn. Ellis, look! It's Alfonso Ribeiro. 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 Hey, you, Carlton. How's it shaking? Hey, guys. Is there a record we can help you find? Uh, yeah. You got any Tom Jones? <laughs> I'm Carlton. You want to see the dance? Well, yeah, of course. But, I mean, isn't it demeaning? You know, having to dance for strangers? I guess not. He looks so happy, doesn't he? Yeah. He sure does. Uh, what the fuck, man? What Just did relax. you do? Relax. Shit. You just murdered Alfonso Rally Roll. Are you going to kill me now? Because I'm a witness? Or are you going to kill me? Oh, no. My life is starting to flash before my eyes. I bet that's depressing as shit. Are you going to kill me? When did you learn the art of ninja stars? Just do it already. Kill me. Are you a robot? No, I'm not a robot. Why are you asking me that? Look, that dancing fool ain't no person. He's some sort of has-been cyborg or some shit. Whoa, you're right. Why? Hey, guys, remember me, Natalie, from Facts of Life? Oh. Are you sure she was a robot? I hope so. Welcome to Pine Vinyl's first official Undie Awards. I'm James Rugburn, owner of Pine Vinyl. Owner. And with me as always... Don't do that. I'm not your sidekick. Okay, fine. Just say it. My name is Els Griggs, and this is us giving awards to people and things for being overlooked by popular culture. We are highlighting things we feel are underrated. And no, this isn't just symbolic. There are real prizes for the winners. Alice. Gift cards, y'all. 8% off any purchase over $150. Good on any item here at Pine Vinyl. Just make sure it's over $150 and uh, you get 8% off. Wow, great deal. Let's get started. Our first category is the most underrated band name of all time. I chose this band not only for being awesome and a rarity amongst today's obsession with new wave revivals, but also because their name is hilariously clever. <laughs> the winner of the most underrated band name of all time is My Morning Jacket. <laughs> right? My morning jacket. Perfect. <laughs> You're a pervert. Next award goes to the most underrated actress of all time. Who she be? Well, I'll tell you. To Anna Ferris. She was putting some of the biggest pieces of shit Hollywood ever shat out. I'll tell you what. She made them work. Every single one. Scary movie? 
Yeah, you think, yeah, sure, that was some funny shit. Yeah, right. Well, I promise you, you ain't thinking about Marlon fucking Wayans, that's for damn sure. Anthony Anderson? Get the fuck out of here. No, you're thinking of the girl, Anna Ferris. She saved every one of those worthless sequels. Oh, and the house bunny? Remember that premise? Playboy bunny moves into a sorority house. And it's not a porno. No nipples, nothing. Some fucking way Anna Ferris made that shit watchable. Most underrated actress of all time. Funny, sexy as hell. Anna Ferris. Come get your gift card. This next one's going to be controversial. It's about the most underrated rapper of all time. This artist not only is never mentioned with the likes of LL Cool J, Tupac Shakur, the notorious Biggie Smalls, but also is often the butt of cruel jokes. He doesn't deserve to be. That's why I chose, as the most underrated rapper of all time, the Fresh Prince, Will Smith. Talent-wise, he's as smooth as any MC. He's got great word-per-minute ratio, and his clarity is superb, almost devoid of any urban dialect whatsoever. And just because he's not a bitches and hoes type rapper, he's never taken seriously. Some would even call him a rapper for white people. That's offensive. But at the same time, thank you. I'll take him. Because Will Smith is one of the best rappers of all time. Holy shit, are you done talking about rap music? You are completely off the script, Will Smith. The fuck you talk about Will Smith? Willow's dad? I've warned you, dumbass, about talking up rappers like you've been somewhere. You don't know shit about rap. Yeah, I do. If you did, you wouldn't say the words notorious Biggie Smalls like a damn fool. And you sure as hell wouldn't have said Will fucking Smith. My God, you're wrong. The most underrated rapper of all time is Tretch. Not by nature. Fact. Done. Next. The most underrated chain restaurant of all time. Mmm, just think about it makes me hungry. Fuck Applebee's, fuck Chi-Chi's, fuck Golden Crail, fuck Ruby Tuesdays, fuck Baker Square, fuck Chili's, fuck Olive Garden, fuck Romano's Macaroni Grill, fuck Paul Richards, fuck Denny's, and fuck the Red Lobster. When I want an affordable meal from a chain restaurant, I look for the big-ass American flag waving in the sky, and I look down. Boom. When I'm hungry, I go to Perkins Family Restaurant, most underrated restaurant chain of all time. You want banana cream pie and a pancake? I know I fucking do. Perkins. And for our final award, it's one that Ellis and I worked on for a long, long time. The most underrated actor of all time, ladies and gentlemen. The most underrated actor of all time is Dan Aykroyd. You may be saying to yourself, what? No, I love Dan Aykroyd. He's definitely properly rated. Well, I'm here to tell you you're wrong, super wrong. Jack Nicholson, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jimmy Stewart, Tom Hanks, Denzel Washington, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Will Smith. These actors are considered the best. But what about Dan Aykroyd? Oh, he wasn't in big enough movies. Uh, did you enjoy Ghostbusters? Oh, too fun for you? Okay, how about The Great Outdoors? Oh, John Candy stole the show. Well, maybe that was on purpose. Maybe Danny knew that this was John's big moment. Great actors do that, smarty. He started out his career next to the likes of John Belushi, Chevy Chase, and Bill Murray. He's overshadowed and underrated since the day he set foot in show business. Always the side man, Blues Brothers, trading places, Celtic pride. But what he did on the side was where his legend was born. Sure, he made some horseshit movies. He killed franchises like Will Smith killed aliens on 4th of July. But he also made some of the most beloved characters come to life. Now you're saying, oh, okay, yeah, you have some great points, but you're high. He has no range. I look back at you and I say... What are you, a fucking idiot? Did you not see My Girl? Did you not watch it and want Dan Aykroyd to be your actual father? He was playing a tuba for Christ's sakes. Let's see Johnny Depp do that. Just because Dan Aykroyd will agree to act in anything people ask him to appear in for money doesn't make him less of a legend. It just means he needs the money. He needs the work because he's underrated. God bless Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Dan Aykroyd. You may remember me from such films as Spies Like Us and The Couch Trip. When I'm not crafting my own delicious vodka or gaining hundreds of pounds, I like to hit up my favorite record store and go on a search for the blues. And here's Eli and Roger, owners of Pine Vinyl. Hey boys, lucky for me, I have a gift card. Yeah, but you have to get it up to $150, so you have to buy like a bowl or something, or, you know. In line. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's Prince. It's, look, it's, it's Prince. Prince. Look at that. Oh my God, it's it's Prince. Prince. Oh, my God. Hello, Prince. My name is St. Peter. You must have a lot of questions. Not really. I'm Prince, so I know I'm in. Plus, I'm a Jehovah. 
Of course you're in, Prince. I was just shitting with you. Come on in. I actually do have one question. Where is he? He? You mean God? No. Not him. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, we're having so much fun. Look! Oh, look who it is! Look, it's Prince! Oh my god, Prince, it's Prince is here! Oh, come on! Well, hello. I'm Alice Griggs. Let me tell you a little bit about Gene Simmons. The bass player, Kiss. Gene Simmons doesn't think rap music is music at all. Which is funny, because he's the bass player of KISS. He also likes to call people pathetic. Pathetic. Which is funny, because he's the bass player of KISS. But he is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Which is funny, because KISS are the worst band of all time. Fuck Gene Simmons and fuck Kiss. All right, DJ, I gotta admit, that's a pretty legit looking time machine. How does it work? I don't even remember. I made it when I was super hello. Super hello? What does super hello mean? He means hi. Yeah, I mix, I mix parrots up sometimes. Parrots? What does parrots mean? Words. Words rhymes with bird. His mom has a pet parrot. Oh, DJ's mom, right? How's Nancy doing? I haven't seen her since your birthday party. Hey, Ellis. Keep your light-colored hands off of my mom or I'll beat you with my penny sack. Penny sack? He has a penny sack. A sack full of pennies. I've seen it. He calls it his treasure. Hey, Ellis. Did you bang DJ's mom at his birthday party? Yep. Why do you need a time machine anyway? Good question. 2016 got fucked up, DJ. We need to fix it. I have a list of key moments in time that we can change, but you're the only one that's smart enough to make this happen. Hey, Rugburn, I like licking my toast. It makes it wet. Jesus, DJ. How can you be so stupid when you're sober and a total genius when you're stoned? Hey, Rugburn, I love licking my... I love licking my hand. It makes it wet. Shut your mouth, eat this gummy, and explain your damn time machine. Mmm. Time travel's a bit of a misnomer. One doesn't travel, rather. They let the world pass them by. It's like sitting on the top of a train, traveling 100 miles per hour. Uh, don't you mean 88 miles per hour? <laughs> right? Oh, I was mistaken. I assumed you were interested in learning about a future technology that could change mankind. But you'd just rather talk about movie stuff. Okay, Rugburn, I'll partake. Were you aware Philip Seymour Hoffman's dead? That was mean and completely uncalled for. Don't interrupt me when I'm talking. Like I was saying, you're on the top of a train. You hop in the air where the resistance is replaced. Yo, DJ, yo. Apologies for interrupting. Please don't mention Paul Walker. But we just need to know how to steer this thing. Feel me? Fair enough. All you have to do is stand in the static ring. You say the date and location you desire to exist in while imagining who you wish to communicate with. Example, January 22nd, Boston, Massachusetts. Imagining Kurt Schilling. Former Red Sox pitcher Kurt Schilling. Catastrophically awful businessman Kurt Schilling. Why do you want to visit that worthless piece of shit? That's right, you don't even know yet. There is one more thing you need to know though. You can only exist in a time for 10 seconds, and then the continuum will throw you towards the present. 10 seconds, you say? Well, changing the world's not going to be easy, Ellis. Let's get to work. All right, me first. January 3rd, Chanhassen, Minnesota, Paisley Park, Prince. Hey, yo, Prince, fuck those pills, dog. Why don't you try some weed? No one's ever offered me weed before. Thank you. February 3rd, New York City. Uh, imagining David Bowie. 
Hello, I'm David Bowie. Yeah, uh, we're from the future. We know um, who you are. And um, actually, I didn't think this one out. I don't know if there's much we can uh, we can do here. What are your thoughts on greatest hits compilations? Ah, God damn it! I fucked that one up. Ugh. All right, we gotta focus. Hey, check this one. Uh, March thirtieth, uh, Las Vegas. Uh, place my bet, eighteen thousand dollars. Chicago Cubs win the World Series. Give me my motherfucking money. This isn't about personal gain, Alice. We're trying to save the world here. My money, motherfucker. My money. All right, whatever. Uh, March first, New York City, Donald Trump. Oh hey, how's it going? Um, we're from the future, and you win. You're the president. I see. You know, I'm dropping out of the 2016 election. It's uh, it's rigged. It's like nah. Nice. Boom. That was a big one, Ellis. You're welcome, planet. <laughs> I got one. May 19th, Los Angeles. U.S. swimmer Ryan Lochte. <laughs> wow, we did it. We fixed 2016. Yeah, I think we did pretty good. If you'll excuse me, I have a mission of my own. July 17th, Minneapolis. My birthday party. Oh, fuck. It's such an absolute honor to have you here with us today, and I hope your presence here is also an honor, for you have been hand-chosen to participate in the greatest smoking session of all time. Yeah, right. Check it. We chose five people we would most want to get fucked up with. Each of you have a special quality, something that will make this the greatest smoking session of all time. Hello, Tom Petty. You were chosen because A, you're Tom Petty, and B, you are a witty and wonderful storyteller. Thanks, man. Kind of you. No problem, oh man. Okay. Everyone say hello to Snoop. We chose you because you brought a bunch of really strong ass weed. And I lost my virginity to la de da de we like to party. Alright. Smoking weed, high school football, y'all. Hey everyone, look, it's Bob Dylan. What if I wasn't here? What if I just got like an abandoned trolley car at the end of the line? What's Bob Dylan doing here for? And Sir Paul McCartney. Yeah, sir. That's right. I'll ask you again. What the fuck is Bob Dylan doing here? Hey, it's Mac and Cheese. I told you not to call me that, you Nancy River Conch. Cheese is the cheesiest. Why are you calling Paul McCartney macaroni and cheese? Because he's cheese! Hey, what? What? You sound like a fucking frog getting fist jammed from a deep sea fishing mitt. What language is motherfucker speaking? I don't speak Dutch, Grandma. Yeah, I don't either, Snoop. Shut the fuck up, Paul. Oh, Tom Petty, huh? Did you know I invented punk music and techno music? Fuck. I drive a Lincoln, because I like it. Matthew McConaughey. Go Longhorns. Hey, you want to hear a joke? What does a beetle eat for lunch? Macaroni and cheese, man. Fuck you. You got it, Tom Petty. Macaroni and cheese. Of course, Tom Petty's sucking off Bob Dylan. He made a career of it, you know. Guess what, Petty? You're not in me league, mate. What league? Old lady softball, man. <laughs> you just got bitch slapped by a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> hey, fuck all of you. I'm in the Guinness Book of World Records. I wrote here, there, and fucking everywhere. I don't need this shit from you knicker pisses. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up. What'd you just say? Knicker. You said knicker, like British pants. All right. This has turned into a proper clusterfuck. We're here for laughs, bro. So I need you five to get the fuck out of here. All right, new group. Tina Fey. Nicholas Cage and that crazy face, former NBA and NBA jam legend Sean Kemp, the dog from Frasier, and Corey motherfucking Feldman. Because Goonies 2 ain't happening, Pops. You're up. Are you high? Yeah, I think I am. I'm high. Yeah, me too. You know what's stupid about this? Everything except one. All you want is number one, right? Well, here it is. Here's the greatest of all time list. Only the number ones. 
The greatest guitar solo of all time is Let's Go Crazy by Prince. Why? Because there's like a million notes in it, and you know every one of them. The greatest beer of all time is Stella's. Because it's always good. The greatest TV show of all time is Wonder Years. Because Kevin climbs up to Winnie's window, and then Bob Seger starts playing, and my life changed. The greatest singer of all time is Michael Jackson. Number two is Sam Cooke. Number three is Elvis Redding. I list them because I hate to not give them each number one. But what are you going to do with Michael Jackson, Dirty Diana, motherfucker? The funniest race car driver name of all time is Dick Trickle. The second funniest name in NASCAR is Petty Vagina. No, you're thinking of Richard Petty and uh, the word vagina. But fuck NASCAR. The greatest song of all time is Holiday Road by Lindsey Buckingham. Featured in the movie National Lampoon Vacation. The best Fast and Furious movie of all time is Fast Five, motherfucker. Action. P-Walk. Cars. Jordana fucking Brewster. P-Walk. Gal Gadot. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman? You goddamn right. The Rock. Joaquin Del Mayer. The villain in every fucking movie. Heist. Fucking P-Walk. Oof. Gets my blood boiling just thinking about it. Fast Five, motherfucker. The greatest cartoon of all time is The Muppet Babies. Why? Because everything I know, I learned from the Muppet Babies. The greatest place to meet a bunch of racists is Fenway Park. The greatest Johnny Depp performance is when he's on the red carpet pretending not to be super drunk and depressed. The greatest weed of all time is the weed that I just smoked about five minutes ago. Holy shit, man. The greatest Nirvana album of all time is In Utero. <laughs> in Utero. Yep. The greatest titties in Hollywood are still Jennifer Love Hewitt. Hello. Nope, you can't say that kind of stuff anymore. People don't like when you talk about women like that in their bodies. What people? Women. I'm just giving compliments. I didn't know the compliments were bad, but whatever. The greatest Paula Poundstone joke was the one about the Flintstone cup falling on the ground. And then her mom is like, see, this is why we can't have anything nice here or in the house. <laughs> Paula Poundstone. The greatest rap song of all time was Lucas with the Lid Off by motherfucking Lucas. Boom, bitch! The greatest musical of all time is Popeye, starring Robin Williams. Music by Harry Nelson. Directed by Robert Altman. It's a masterpiece and no one gives it the respect that it deserves, but it's literally the best. The greatest bird of all time is the Blue Jay. Blue Jays, did you know this? Can actually imitate other birds to scare other birds away. You're super high. You know that? Yep. I'm actually pretty high right now. I just mentioned that. That, that knocked me out that last hit. The greatest 80s song of all time is Come On Eileen by Dexy's Midnight Runners or whatever the fuck they're called. The greatest Dorito is the Cool Ranch. Do we have any Cool Ranch Doritos? The greatest Matthew McConaughey line in Days to Confused is Aerosmith Three Weeks. <laughs> Remember when he says that to the redhead? Yeah, he says, love those redheads. Such a good movie. <laughs> it's so good. It's the best movie about the 70s. Yeah, so th th do that list. The greatest movie about the 70s is... Nope, never mind. It's Almost Famous. Sorry. Uh, almost Famous. The greatest Rocky of all time is Rocky V. Oh, everybody hates Rocky V. Everyone says Rocky V is no good. Well, let me remind you of something. Pauly, Rocky's old friend, just got knocked the fuck out by Tommy Gunn. Laying in the alley. Enter Rocky. He kneels down by his friend's side. The man that's been with him through thick and thin. He also bankrupted his ass, but whatever. Polly wipes the blood off his lip. Rocky turns, looks at Tommy Gunn over his shoulder, slowly stands up and says, You knock him down, why don't you try knocking me down? Rocky Five. The greatest song about masturbation is Cindy Lauper's She Bop. The greatest country of all time is the United States of America. Except our president sucks. And the greatest state in this United States of America is Minnesota. Why? Because in Minnesota, everything's fine. What's wrong? Mindy, what's wrong? Tell me. Oh, nothing's wrong. I'm fine. I'm fine. Hello, the name is Sean. Good morning, fellow Americans. Hoping to speak to the owner. I'm the owner. Co-owner. Yeah, co-owner. Okay, I can wait until he arrives. Wait until who arrives? Your co-owner. Why do you assume I'm not the co-owner? What the fuck? What, do you think I'm going to rob your ass? Are you going to buy something? 
We have the silver bullet band back in the dollar section. Speaking of, did you know Bob Seeger was actually a member of the Eagles? That's incorrect. No, it's true. No, it's not true. It's true that Bob Seeger acted as a mentor to a young pre-Eagles Glenn Fry, but he was never, not for one second, a member of the Eagles. The heat is on. The heat is on. The heat is on. The heat is on. It's all on the street. Oh, I love that hot track. Do you guys have a copy? Maybe I should rob your ass. And that's exactly why I'm here. I want to talk to you about security. Oh, excuse me. It's Ted Nugent. Oh, I bet this is pretty exciting for you guys, a couple rock fans. You guys like Ted Nugent? Who's Ted Nugent? Oh, very funny. <laughs> He's awesome. Hey, Teddy boy, how's it going? Who's Ted Nugent? Uh, he's a guy in the 70s who wrote a song about two guys having sex with each other and enjoying it. It's called Cat Scratch Fever. I know, Ted. The lefty fake news is so blind. Yeah. Yeah, America first. Oh, yeah. I know. Exactly. Then why was I shoveling snow last winter? <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Well... Uh, I'm flying to Moscow next Wednesday, so, yeah. Well, yeah, of course I want to hear an Obama joke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Don't tweet that. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually right next to one. Yeah, my wallet's in my car. Yeah. The other one looks like Maddow. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love money any way I can get it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, DNC killed him. No, yeah. No, yep. Yeah. Kim.com. <laughs> yep. Hillary has performed abortions. I know. Do you hear that on CNN? Nope. No. No, I know. Local news. Yeah. Yeah, okay. God bless America. Yep. And bye bye. God bless Trump. God bless Trump. Sorry about that. As I was saying, security. Have you ever heard of LifeLock? Oh man, you're another salesman? We just had a round man come trying to sell us gold. He's taking a dump in our bathroom right now. Jesus, you need gold. Gold, 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 gold. Hey, wait a second. Are you Fox News anchor Sean Hannity? In fact, I am. <sighs> Obama? Looks like you're missing a button. I ain't missing shit. Now give me your wallet and Rolex before I make you my bitch. Pun. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Pun Vinyl, the in-store performance. Uh, we got a special guest that you guys already know about. You lined up here about two days ago, and you're been rocking and ready to go. All right. So without further ado, Pun Vinyl brings to you Drake. Hey y'all, all right, let's do it, here, drop that beat. <laughs> Yo, I guess you didn't hear me, I said, drop that beat. <laughs> Come on, dog. Come on, dog, drop that beat. Come on, dog, you're embarrassing me, I could be on a parade float right now. Come on, dog, drop that beat. Come on, drop that beat. No, I ain't gonna drop that beat. You wanna know why? Because you can't sing. You can't dance. You can't rap. And you don't even write your own verses. You're no good. And all you motherfuckers that came to see him, you're out. Bam for life. Get out. This ain't no joke. Yo, Rugburn. Do you remember Mr. Rogers? Yeah, with Eddie Murphy. <laughs> so funny. Who the fuck talk about Eddie Murphy? I said Mr. Rogers. Oh, yeah, funny. <laughs> you see what I did there? I always see what you do. Anyway, you remember Mr. Rogers? Yeah, of course. I didn't watch it much, to be honest. Yeah, I know you didn't, and it shows. If there's something you want to share, then please feel free. But if you're going to sit over there throwing hateful insults at me, 
well, bub, not sure how to break it to you. All right, shut up now. I love Mr. Rogers. I think it's because he looked kind of like my grandpa from North Dakota. I love the sound of his voice and the way I felt when he took off his kicks and switched up on a cardigan and some shit and just got comfy. You know, big fucking street lot for no reason. Hungry ass fish. Yeah, I love that show. But you know what? Chicken butt. That show fucked me up. What? Why? How? That's like the most wholesome show ever made. Yeah, it was for sure. Until that motherfucking Charlie came rolling in all herky-jerky and shit. Wait, you're saying the neighborhood of make-believe caused you long-lasting damage? I'm saying those nightmare puppets fucked me up. All the way. Huh. This is great information to learn. My dad worked a lot, and my mom worked not, so... I was alone a lot, and I watched TV. Fred was like my TV dad. But every show, I'd start stressing when he made his way over to that little love seat spot where the trolley would come sneaking up on his ass. Oof. I wanted that trolley to break down so bad. Every show, I'd pray Fred would say, Well, sorry, kids. Your trolley ran out of gas or whatever, and so let's just call some motherfucker in town and go on a field trip. But every day, that fucking piano would stop playing. Remember that? That creepy-ass little melody? And then came that trolley. First of all, fuck that trolley. He never picked anyone up. He was always empty as fuck. He'd just sneak up on Fred and then go off into the darkness. And we, the viewer, are supposed to, like, you know, chase his ass, right? He was always just leaving. Where the fuck you going? You a trolley? Pick our ass up. What, are we supposed to walk there? The fuck are you even here for, then? But that don't matter. Because the neighborhood of make-believe was the saddest shit of all time. Straight up sad. The puppets ain't got no emotion, except that murder grin. Mouths don't move for shit, and you know what really messed me up? When humans come squeezing in like mythical fucking giants or some shit. I mean, they're huge. They're bigger than the goddamn building. King Friday had like a niece, and that niece was like normal female size, right? And King Friday was a shitty ass puppet the size of my foot. I remember thinking, man, that's fucked up. Oh, and fuck that owl too, that judgmental motherfucker in that tree. I just hated it so much, and I just wanted Fred to, you know, come back, send that trolley, and play that piano, and get us back, you know, back to back to the pad. And just waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and the goddamn story would get sadder and sadder. And where's the piano? You know, it has to be coming soon, right? I'm gonna jump in here and offer a, you know, a rescue line or a life preserver, or whatever they say in psychology. Um, that's one hell of a memory, pal. But it's still not in the top five. Children's shows don't count. So, uh, hey, will you excuse me? Hey, Burnout Benny, do you have any neighborhood of make-believe weed? <laughs> yeah, you know, like in Mr. Rogers? <laughs> you do. Awesome. That is so awesome. Hey, one more question. Can you roll it in a blunt? Hey, Ellis, how are you feeling? Pretty good. This is nice. What'd Burn Up Benny call this one? He called it the Fast and Furious Strain. What'd you say? For real? Happy birthday, best friend. I wanted to give you a really nice present for your birthday this year, and... I mean, if it wasn't for you, getting shot by Officer Backus, we wouldn't even have a store to work at. I mean, also me getting a temp job at Billy Ocean Promotion help, but it's not my birthday, so happy birthday. Alright, so what, are we gonna start driving some shit? Jordana Brewster gonna show up and and uh, warn me about some espionage type ninja shit? Where's Vin Diesel, that candy ass son of a bitch? I'm ready, let's go. Fast and furious, all right. Ah, uh, it makes me happy that you're happy. All right, Ella, strap in. It's gonna be a wild ride. Maybe I should drive. I mean, you ain't never seen those movies. You got what it takes to ride like Peewalk? Uh, two things. One... You don't know how to drive in normal life, so... And two, didn't Paul Walker die in a car crash? Nope, we don't bring that shit up. We allow the spirit of P-Walk to live free among us, inspiring us when we need to go faster. Get furiouser. You shut up about that other stuff. Well, don't worry, Ellis. I think you're going to have plenty of fun in the passenger seat. Whatever, let's just do this. Is it kicking in yet, Ellis? 
Not sure. Things are getting a little dizzy, but what would you see? Uh, what do I see? Uh, whoa, is that Nicholas Cage? Nicholas Cage wasn't in Fast and Furious. Are you sure? Because I, I remember him doing cars. You're thinking of Gone in 60 Seconds, which is not in the Fast and Furious franchise. But yes, it is in the top three best films of all time, in case you were wondering. Whoa, Gone in 60 Seconds is in the top three best movies of all time? Wow. So according to you, technically it could be your number one, right? It's in the top three. It's a perfect movie. It is a perfect movie. Yeah, it could be number one. Unreal. That is one hell of a statement. So, is Gone in 60 Seconds better than Titanic? 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 Never heard of it. Was that some robot monster thing? Is Gone in 60 Seconds better than Silence of the Lambs? Easily. Is Gone in 60 Seconds better than Tim Burton's Batman? The one with Beetlejuice dressed as a tire? Yeah, way better. Is Gone in 60 Seconds better than Wizard of Oz? There ain't even a car crash in that movie. What do you want me to say? Okay, we're going to do a real test. Are you ready? Give it to me. Is Gone in 60 Seconds better than Captain Ron? Of course not. Of course not. Captain Ron, number one. How are you feeling? It's starting to kick in. I'm rolling in some kind of ride, or... I don't know. Not sure what this is I'm in. What do you see? Uh, things are starting to appear. I see a big blue castle. We're rolling on by it. Seems familiar, but I'm not sure what Fast and Furious I'm in yet. I don't see the rock. This might be an early one or some shit. Man, this car is slow as fuck. Bunch of poles and shit. Looks like we're on a train track. Yeah, we're on a train track. We're on a train. But... Do you hear that? Hear what? That sound. It's like a piano. It's a piano chugging away. Wait, am I in a trolley car? Rookburn, am I riding in a trolley car? Why am I looking at King Friday right now? What'd you say? What'd you say, creepy ass? Huh? Bullshit, you pup bitch. You ain't telling me a motherfucking thing. Yeah, you chew owl. Oh, that owl. Oh, that condescending motherfucker. Oh, no, here come that old Rugburn. What have you done? Yep. All right, here's your delicious birthday blunt. I never knew Ellis is such a neighborhood and make-believe fan. Oh, no, he's not. He's absolutely horrified of it. <laughs> Man, does this make me angry. Slow hand, more like slow bland. No, well, that sucks. I can do better. All right. Clapton ruined while my guitar gently weeps and stole George's wife. Fact. It's a bit scandalous. Damn kids don't even know who the Beatles are anymore. They probably think Justin Bieber was a Beatle. Does Bieber still make things? Oh, I know what to comment. Hey, remember when Eric Clapton went on a super racist rant on stage in the 70s? Although very true, not very funny. Alright, let's be funny and really show them. Wouldn't it be hilarious if he actually read the comment and was like, Oh man, I'm an asshole. How about this? Eric Clapton is the mayonnaise, mayonnaise mayonnaise mayo on top of a vanilla cupcake that's funny because it's so gross and super white maybe too gross uh i think my super commenting skills are fading with old age come on clapton this is easy i can do this think wait that's it I got it! The perfect comment. 
Eric Clapton still alive? L F M A O. Boom. Tour canceled. Oh look, someone responded already. This will probably go viral. What was like an ad? Oh, popped up. Congratulations. You won the Emerald Ticket. Use this to tour and sample all our magical products. Taste the gummiest gummy ever gummied or puff the smoothest sativa ever sativa Let us take you on an unforgettable fog. Fog? Is like a pun? Is like a smoke pun? Probably just a typo. Ride through our groovy magic factory. Good for you and a guest. Don't be late. Get your badge. Huh. It's like Willy Wonka, but with weed. That could be fun. 24 hours later. Bye, Minnesota. Off to spend our hard-earned money in another state. Oh, well. Maybe next session. Right, state legislature? I'm excited to go to Washington State. Oh, for sure. Me too. Me too. Have you ever heard of D.B. Cooper? D.B. Cooper? Yeah, he's my grandpa. D.B. Cooper was your grandpa? The guy who stole a ton of money and then jumped out of an airplane and was never found? That was your grandpa? No. I was thinking of somebody else. Who are you thinking of? My grandpa. Duh. Well, we made it. This place is huge. What if they have, like, actual Oompa Loompas, like rolling joints or something? How cool would that be? Not cool at all. If there are little miniature clowns running around this motherfucker, I ain't doing shit. Interesting. So little clowns are just as scary as big clowns. Scarier. Way scarier. By, like, a billion times. I get that. Because of the way they run? Yeah. (sighs) Hello, welcome to Billy Bonga's Weed Factory or Funny Farm, whatever we call it. Follow me for the experience of a lifetime. Seems legit. Let's do it. All right, boys, before the tour starts, I just wanted to ask a few questions. Oh, both Ellis and I have been vaccinated, so we don't need to worry about anything like that. That wasn't my question, was it? My question was, do you think there are tears in heaven? Uh, what? Oh shit, it's Eric Clapton. Girl, like a freedom. Oh, hey, Rugburn, what's going on, man? That Willy Wonka weed is trash. Telling us that things will get much worse before they get better. In local art news, the internationally famous street artist known by millions as Banksy has apparently been spending some time in the Twin Cities. Did the famous artist strike on the side of this struggling Minneapolis business? Harrison Cole is here with the story. It was 48 hours ago when James Rugburn was alerted to something strange appearing outside the record store he and his friend Ellis Griggs own. Yeah, uh, DJ or floor boy helper guy came and said that somebody spaghettied on the wall outside. I asked him, what did you say? And he repeated, someone spaghettied on the wall outside. And I said, oh, you mean graffiti. His brain is different. And, uh, yeah. Outside was a real Banksy painting. A painting, yes. But is it an authentic Banksy painting? The artist's last piece was valued at over $45 million. For a business owner, a Banksy painting could mean financial stability for several lifetimes. I mean, yeah, it makes sense for him to want to pick a place like Pine Vinyl to do one of his masterpieces. We are kind of thought of as like the epicenter of culture and cool amongst the locals so it's so embarrassing i'm actually embarrassed for him 
Not everyone is convinced of the authenticity of the art. Firstly, it's terrible. Has the composition quality of a Home Depot ad. Secondly, the symbolism is pure cringe. This was clearly painted by a failed, miserable artist. Oh, did he say that? Well, I'm surprised he had time to form an opinion with all the rats in his coffee shop. What was your first impression when you laid eyes upon the painting? I thought it was inspiring, beautiful, basically a reality check in some funky kind of cosmic way. I think what it's saying is that, like, okay, this kid is clearly smart, right? He's trying to not only answer the question, but like being, you know, he's reaching out for something more, right? Something higher, but here comes the rain, right? Rain, meaning, I don't know, sadness, maybe? Uh, but it also means life, right? Water is life. Well, look at the book. What does it say on the spine of this book? The word life. So, I think it's saying that there is like, it's like a cycle. Life and death. It goes around and around. If I was going to name this piece, I'd call it the concussion. Why? Because it makes brains die. We sat down with Banksy historian Walden Leonard and asked him if he thought this was an authentic Banksy. No. Why? Look at it. Look. People have opinions about art all the time. That's art. Look at, uh, I don't know, the Sistine Chapel or like this David statue. I mean, some people can look at the David statue and be like, no way, that's not good. Look, look at how big the hands are. And others are like, no, that's awesome art, right? Big hands are cool, you know? So what the critics say doesn't matter. If they think it's so easy, let them try to do it then. Did you paint the picture on the front of your store? What? What are you accusing me of? Did I did I paint that picture? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't have the skill set to paint something that perfect. Why would I lie and say that I painted a uh, Banksy? Money. Yeah. No, I... I don't... I, this is a Banksy. Look at it. Look at it. The candle store across the street has some CCTV footage that includes the front of your store at the time of the incident. Would you like to see it? Nope. Take a look. It shows someone that looks exactly like you painting the picture on the front of your struggling business. Did you paint the picture? on the front of your store. It's still a cool picture though. Isn't it? Wow, what a story. We followed up with Mr. Rugburn this afternoon and asked him what his plans are for the imposter Banksy painting that he embarrassingly painted himself, but as of air time we have not heard back which is expected. He must be absolutely mortified. Coming up after the break, local police crack a cold case with the help of a local pornography collector? Back after a short break, so stick around. You comfy? You got enough room? Little tight, but I'm okay. Thanks for the ride and tickets. Oh, you're tight? Sorry about that. That's 100% my fault. My car only has a bench seat, and it's usually just... Alice and I in here, and we were always comfortable before, but I can see how this new situation could create a feeling of uh, uncomfortableness. Is uncomfortableness a word? How about uh, extreme annoyance? Does that make sense? You shouldn't be here. All right, let's just get to the concert. I've never seen the Stones, and they are on my list of must-see musical acts. It's pronounced ask. My favorite Rolling Stone song is Angie. I hope they play it. Interesting you say that. Do you know what that song is supposedly about? Um, I don't think so. Mick Jagger was sucking off David Bowie and Mick's wife walked in. He felt so bad for her that he wrote Angie as an apology. Remember when you did that to me with Ellis? 
did what? You banged him, but you didn't even write me a song. You didn't even reply to my DMs. You and I weren't dating. We went out once. I'm sorry if you got the wrong impression, It's Jim. not even true anyways. The Angie story? Keith actually wrote it. And it's all made up and not about anyone, so who cares? You know what song I hope they play? Oh, fun. Let me guess. Let me guess. Um, Satisfaction? God, no. Bitch. The fuck you just call her? The Sticky Finger song, Bitch. Jeez, loosen up, man. Don't show Jenny your violent side too early, right? Right? I actually love that song. Well, too bad. They're not even playing it. Bitch. I'll crash this car, motherfucker. What? We can't even talk about Rolling Stones songs right before Rolling Stones concert? Boy, glad you guys are tagging along. This is a lot of fun. How do you know they're not going to play that song? Uh, because of the internet. You ever heard of it, stupid? No, oh, beat your ass. Yeah, the internet's where you send me all those angry DMs after we went out on only one date. A during-the-day date. Oh, good. Now I feel even worse. Cool. Well, I saw the set list from the Milwaukee show. They opened Street Fighting Man, and they closed with satisfaction. Before that, they play Gimme Shelter, and that is when we will take off and beat the crowd out of here. I'm not getting stuck in the parking ramp again. I'm not leaving early. This is the last time I'm ever going to see the Stones. No, I'm not leaving early. Look, we can watch the songs you missed on YouTube the next day. You know how I hate parking ramps. Why do you hate parking ramps? It's none of your business, Jenny. Why? Are you going to try to bang the parking ramp now? That doesn't even make sense. You know what else doesn't make sense? A black guy with a heart on to see satisfaction. Of course, you're only half black. Uh, Jenny, did you know that? That he's only half black? The fact that Ellis is multiracial is one of the many reasons I love him. Wait, what did you say? I said, Ellis being multiracial is one of the many reasons I love him. No, before that, you called him mulatto. What? No, I said multiracial. Nope, you said mulatto. You basically called him the N-word. Really cool relationship you guys have. Doesn't sound toxic at all. You gonna keep this up all night? You know what? There's just too many cars here, man. I think we're gonna have to take off during Midnight Rambler. Possibly start me up. We'll have to see, I guess. Maybe after we can go to Grumpy's for a few beers. I'd love to say thank you for the tickets, Jim. Oh god, no, that would be terrible. We're going to leave during Paint It Black. Hopefully the parking ramp's not too busy then. If you're scared of parking ramps, we can try for a spot on the street. You don't think I thought of that, Jenny? There are no spots on the goddamn street, and I'm not scared of parking ramps, okay? I just happen to not like the spiral parts. And when there's too many cars, and I have to inch down them in between two stupid other fucker people, I get very, very annoyed. Or as I like to call it, a case of the Jennies. I call it that because you are very annoying and very unlikable. Yep, alright, let's just drop us off here and we'll walk the rest of the way. Oh, what a great way not to pay for parking, awesome. You can't always get what you want. But sometimes you'll find, or you might, you might find, you'll get what you need. This next song is one we haven't done yet on this tour. But it came in with a special request and we thought, why not? Dedicated to Jenny with the titty tattoo from her new friend Jim. Here is Anja. Did you guys know I wrote this about my ex-wife? Yeah. I was giving Ziggy Stardust a blowjob after tea one afternoon and whoopsies in walked in me wife. A bit saucy. Anyway, one, two, three, five. And Jeff. Yeah. 
Oh God, 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 don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall, oh God, 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 don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall, oh God, oh God, oh Jesus fucking Christ, I perk on the hundredth goddamn level of this fucking thing, why won't it ever end? Oh, don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall, God, oh 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 God, Hey, Rugburn, can I borrow 50 bucks? Uh, yeah, sure. Why? Sort of a surprise. The less you know kind of thing. Okay. Color me intrigued, Mr. Griggs. Here is 50 bucks. On an unrelated side note, we just paid ourselves today, so I guess I'm confused why you needed to borrow cash already. Did you spend it all? The less you know is better. Okay, Ellis. Uh, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't completely titillated. <laughs> what could it be? Word. <laughs> The next day. Hey, Rugburn, did you get any messages on your phone or anything? Uh, no. Uh, wait, what's this? Hey, you dared, Rugburn? There's a warrant for you, and now you've been officially pulled over. Now don't worry, I'm only here to wish you, uh, uh, wait, I forgot. Uh, the, um, hey, Jared, my name is Officer Larry Wilcox. Star of the hit show Chips. I played a California cop with good looks. I was a real badass dude. I heard from your friend Ellis about your upcoming testicle enlargement surgery. And I wanted to wish you good luck and good vibes. But I'm sure you'll do great. And I hope you have the biggest balls around. Awesome, man. Thanks again. And see you down the highway of life. Chips! How much did that cost? Fifty dollars. Fuck. You. Next day? Hey, Ellis. Did you get any cool messages on your phone? Don't know. Don't care. I care. Uh, you better check your phone for a very special message. I wonder what it'll be. Check your phone to find out. You made me very sad yesterday. You owe me at least the satisfaction of opening up the message that awaits you on your phone. Oh, look. I think I got a message. Yo, yo, Alice Griggs. This is Rip Van Winkle himself, the Iceman, as in Vanilla Ice. Just here hanging with Michelangelo and wanted to say, what's up? Thanks so much for being my biggest fan. Your buddy Justin Rugturd said you have all my music and your favorite movie is Cool As I, starring myself. <laughs> so much love to you and yours. You really made my day. And uh, I didn't mention the venereal disease part. From my home to yours... May you have a blessed life, Mr. Griggs, and stay cool. Thank you, sir. Well, that was nice. He sounded happy. Ah, uh -huh, Vanilla Ice fan. I'm telling everyone. <laughs> he also thinks you have a dick fungus, but he didn't mention it in his message. He was probably so embarrassed for you, he didn't even want to bring it up. <laughs> Vanilla Ice fan. <laughs> Ha 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 loser. Loser. How much did that cost? Not much. I'm gonna look it up. Don't. Whatever. Who cares? I don't. $349. Damn. If I knew you wanted to spend that much shit, we would've got Air Castrata. Fuck you. You know what I mean? Fuck you. Alright, I made it an hour into this. Let's watch something else, please. No way, it's the Oscars. I love the Oscars, and I love Amy Schumer. Oh, uh, I know, Jenny, but come on. This is the lamest shit, though, for real. Let's watch that It's Cake show, right? The one with have a briefcase and it's cake, bowling ball, it's cake. Come on. No, just wait. Hey, oh, look, there's Chris Rock. You love Chris Rock. Do I? Yeah, just shut up. Damn, did Chris Rock just do a G.I. Jane joke? What's G.I. Jane? It was a movie from like 20 years ago. Demi Moore shaved her head and she was in the army. What the hell's Will doing? 
Hold up. Did that motherfucker just slap Chris Rock in the face for a G.I. Jane joke? Oh my god. Chris Rock took that hit though, didn't he? Willa's dad played Muhammad Ali and couldn't knock down a 60-year-old Chris Rock? No wonder his wife's going out to eat. Going out to eat? What does that mean? Aw, oh, Jada bangs other men. Young dudes. And then she humiliates Will on her TV show by telling his ass all about it in front of everyone. They have, like, an open relationship or something. Open relationship? Hmm. Is that something you think you want? Oh, what was that? Do you think an open relationship is something that you want? No. You're all I ever wanted, so why would someone else ever do for me that, what, it, what, it, right? That I wouldn't want anything else but you, right? That's how I feel too, Brown Bear. Cool. I heard Jada has like a condition that and her hair falls out because of it. Yeah, Rugburn has that too. He's got like a bald spot in the back, and it's thin and all nasty and shit on top. He's starting to comb it over. <laughs> No, this is different. It's like a medical condition. Yeah, hair falling out hair falling out, right? What's the difference, right? You end up bald both ways. Maybe because she's a woman. What does that matter? Oh, I don't know. Um, if someone made fun of me, would you slap them? Depends. Depends on what? If it was funny. Okay, let's say we were in the Smith's shoes and Chris Rock made fun of something about me. Like what? Oh, I don't know. What What would I get poked fun about? Your weight. I mean, the weight. You know, the way you wait for things. You're always impatient. No, girl, I told you we shouldn't watch the goddamn Oscars. Hey, can I ask you guys a question? Oh, Ellis, who does this guy look like? Who? This guy right here. Hello. Who he look like? Oh, I don't know. Just keep looking. Once you see it, it'll just, like, it'll appear, and you'll kick yourself for not seeing it before. Hey, you think I could ask you a question? Do you see it yet? Maybe. I don't know. Give me a hint. It's hard for me with white people. Unless you guys got tattoos on your face and some shit, y'all pretty much the same to me. This guy is the spitting image of this dude. Just keep looking, it'll come. I was looking for Block Party. The band, not the, uh, event. Do you guys have it? Give me a hint. Fine. He played a cartoon fish. I hope that didn't give it away. Cartoon fish. Cartoon fish? Well, you play, uh, Finding Nemo? What'd he look like? No, it wasn't Finding Nemo. Well, damn. Does this dude look like the actor of the fish, or does he look like the actor as a fish? It's funny you say that. Uh, when they made the film, they designed the fish to look like him. So this dude looks like a dude as a fish? Y yes. Sort of, yeah. I don't know. Uh, there was another one of them fish movies, right? One of them CGI ones. It was about whales, I think. Shark Tale. Yeah, who starred in that? It wasn't him. He doesn't exist anymore. It was the Block Party Remix album. Do you have it? Just say if you have it. All right, give me a non-fish-related clue. Okay, he was the comic relief on two hit TV shows. Okay, so not the star, but he was like the funny one. Was he funny looking? Very funny looking. All right. Funny looking fish face motherfucker. Uh, let's see. I tried calling, but no one answered. I wanted to ask on That skinny phone. ass dude from uh, Road Trip. Remember that DJ guy? Remember that skinny ass dude? He uh, banged that black woman? Remember that? that? Is that Road Trip? He sniffing her panties or some shit? And the old man had that boner? That's a pretty good movie. Was it that or no? Oh, wait, we're talking TV shows. No, it wasn't that guy. Um, and he has done both TV and movie. That creepy dude from the movie Ghost, remember? 
that goat, he was like a ghost. He's the one that like taught him how to move shit. Uh, there's a resemblance. That guy's terrifying looking, but uh, no, not him. Maybe I'll just look or go somewhere else. Chill out, dude. He's almost there. Just let him guess a few more times. Then I'll tell you where the record is, okay? Okay. Who's the guy on Jackass that I would look like someone just beat the shit out of his face? What's his name? Steve-o. Not Steve-o. Damn, I don't know then, dog. All right, here's my final clue. He was on the Andy Griffith Show. What the fuck is the Andy Griffith Show? That sounds like some white shit. Is that some white shit? Oh, yeah, it's probably the whitest. I think I'm done guessing. Huh, surprising. Okay. Don Knotts. Don Knotts. He also appeared on Three's Company, along with The Andy Griffith Show, and The Incredible Mr. Limpet. Okay. Whatever. No, we don't have that Block Party album. Hey, Ellis. Does Jenny wear sexy underwear? Your look is telling me that you do know the answer, but possibly don't think it's information that I need to know. Well, I only ask because I found a pair laying on the stairs leading up to the apartments. Where are they right now? What? The panties? I don't know. Probably on the staircase still. I can go check real quick. Hold up. I'll go check. You stay right here. Stop, Ellis. The underwear isn't there anymore. I think I picked them up, maybe. Probably next to my keys or something. I'll go get them. Did you sniff them? No, what? Did I what? Did you sniff them? I don't remember. But it is a possibility. Yes, it's a possibility. But so is me putting them on and dancing around in front of a mirror. Damn, you dance around in Jenny's underwear? No. I just sniffed them. Hey, guys. Are you Ellis and James? Yeah, who you be? Hey, my name's Jimmy. I have a YouTube channel where we have a lot of fun playing crazy games for big prizes. And curious if you guys wanted to compete against another small business in a winner-take-all battle. What's your YouTube channel name? Mr. Beast. Okay, kind of a weird name. Not, not sure if that'll catch on. I haven't seen you in my algorithm. You know what? Yeah, we're doing all right. Uh, wh what, what channels do you watch on YouTube? Uh, what channels? Uh, the one with the 40-year-old guys talking about old video games. Uh, what other one? The one where the... That 40-year-old dude's talking about old movies. Um... What other ones? The ones with the 40-year-old guys talking about old music. Yeah, yeah, I... Okay, I can see what we're... We're doing what do you here. got for like fist fights on your channel? Do you have a lot of fights? Like dudes punching each other in the face? Uh, no, it's, it's actually a lot of positivity and good vibes. Yeah, you see, I like fights, so <laughs> that's where I live. So when you say battle, what exactly do you mean, Mr. Beast? Oh, let me show you I'm the man with the money. Oh. Today we're here in Minneapolis, Minnesota with two local businesses who are here to compete for one million dollars. Our first team is from Pine Vinyl, a record store located in South Minneapolis. We have James Rugburn, Ellis Griggs, and Dennis Tanner. Wait, your last name is Tanner? Like... Our next team is the owners of Maple Leaf Records, Adam Burt. Ellis, look, it's the bootleg versions of us again. I think we're going to win the shit out of that million dollars. Depends what he's going to make us do. And our final team is Earth Mud Coffee Book Lounge. We welcome Cal Hergersky and Leif Olson. Ooh, I hope it's trivia competition. Don't see a real intellectual challenge coming from Team One. Oh, hey, Edinburgh. I'll be over tomorrow to get that big, big box out of Brian Eno Rarities. Hey, Maple Leaf Music. Careful of this one. He fucking sucks. Oh no, man. We'll have to edit that out. See, here on this channel, we keep it we keep it real, we keep it love. Good vibes. Now, let's get to today's challenge. You see that circle that's surrounding you? 
Whoever stays in this circle the longest wins one million dollars. Question. Do we all have to stay in the circle, or can just one of us stay in the circle? Oh, that's not fair. Oh, uh, it's whoever is like, you know, whatever team he's on, that team wins, right? They just split it. So you just need one. Boom. Oh, shit. Sorry, DJ. We forgot to tell you it's all over. Don't worry. We got you a snowmobile, too. Hey, Ellis. I just took a piss and got three streams. Why would you tell me that? Kind of cool, isn't it? Cool in what way? Uh, well, when you throw it back at me like that... You need to join a social club or a cribbage group or some shit. Something that gives you normal things to talk about. See, you ain't coming up here telling me how your post jizz piss is shooting all over the goddamn wall. You hear me? I do. I do. Loud and clear. Hello, I'm Elon Musk. Richest man in the world. Elon Putz. Oh, good one. A fellow troll. You know me. I love a good joke. That's why I bought Twitter. Hey, Elon Putz. You're not funny. I am sorta, of, though. Uh, you see, the comedy is that I'm the richest man in the world, but I still post dank memes. I have a ton of fans. Uh, no you don't. Ha ha ha, I like you. <laughs> You're my kind of guy. <sighs> no, dude. Did your car just start on fire and drive away by itself? Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> Elon putts. Yeah, you did that joke already, though. Well, here in Pine Vinyl, we repeat jokes a lot. Okay, Elon putts. Very well. I was going to offer you the new lime green check mark to you, but uh, maybe not anymore. Bro, where are you from? Your accent sucks. Oh, you didn't read his Wikipedia? Elon Putz is from the land of daddy's money. I made my own career by being a rocket scientist and a skilled businessman. 400 billion for a social media site that loses millions daily. Sounds like a Putz move to me. I'm not a Putz. I impregnated a pop star. What pop star? Grimes. Damn. I own a record store and I don't know who the fuck that is. That's because Elon Putz probably made her up. Yo, man. Your car just tried to kill me. Hey, yo, was that Dave Chappelle? What's up, brother? Damn. What happened to your voice? Do you eat the cigarettes after you smoke them? Look here, man. I'm gonna tell you a little bit of a story. Nah, you know what? I'm good. You sound like Gargamel from the Smurfs, and I never liked that motherfucker, so... <laughs> Come on, Dave. Let's get out of Wokeville and go find some other people to troll. Later, losers. There goes the most unfunny person in the world, Elon Putz. I'm the richest man in the world. I make rockets with a big wiener. Wait a second. Who's Elon Putz, really? <laughs> Andy, Andy Kaufman. Kaufman. Wait, didn't we? Yeah, we did. It's a mine gorilla. What was it? Is someone in here? Hello? I enjoy swinging quite a bit. Hello. I was the quiet one. Is that you, George Harrison? It was. As it's always been. Hey, George. Did you hear Paul made a movie in the 80s? What's this now? Yeah. Our old bandmate Paul decided to re-record a bunch of our songs. And then he put them in the most daft movie you could ever imagine. Our songs? Don't remember you doing much on them, actually. Chill out, Paul. Let it be, mate. Peace and love. Shut the fuck up, dick. That's Richard to you. What in the world? <laughs> Is this happening? I'm not even high. Oh, fuck. All right, here we go. Hey, Paul, I heard you went to jail. What happened? Did the judge hear Ebony and Ivory? Hey, John, how come you stopped making songs in 1980? Oh, 
fucking right. I sent him. I sent him to come from the future to kill me because I heard temporary secretary and I wanted to fucking die. None of this matters anymore. The important thing is me song, Here Comes the Sun, is the most popular Beatles song of all time. Fuck off with that. It's fucking not. Does that bother you? George being better than you. Hey, I already wrote one of your songs, John. Imagine there's no Lenin. 1981. Fuck. It's okay to be second best bowl. Or in this case of the Beatles, fourth best. Oh, below Ringo, fuck. Don't make me blue. As you know, darling, I love only you. Shut up, dick. Peace and love. I wrote the song like a Rolling Stone. We are the Rolling Stones. Go make more disco twat. Hey, John. Haven't seen you around the club lately. Oh, look at that. Weird, Mick. Paul already did that joke. Of course, you know all about stealing from people. Well, that hurt. What are we doing here now? What are, what are you looking at? It's the battle for the king of the 60s. It's the Beatles versus the Stones and Dylan and who else knows, I don't know. I'm not following. Like, I'm not hearing any or seeing anything. What's going on? Did you try the new stuff from Benny? Uh, God, I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember smoking. Oh, fuck. The Beatles are the best band of the 60s. This isn't even up for debate. Well, yeah, but some of us kept rocking wrong after the 60s, mate. And some of us made a bunch of silly love songs. Uh, uh. I'm the Guinness Book World Record most popular songwriter of all time. You melted fucking skeleton. Uh, I wrote visions of Johanna. Paul's right. The Beatles were the best. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? Is he having a laugh? Are you sure about that? <laughs> You're all wack as shit. Let Jimmy take over. You see, when I show up, things get a lot cooler. You notice that? I do, Ellis. Excuse me. Curious if you carry any Harry Styles in your shop. Harry Styles? Uh, yeah. I think it's in the pop section under the Tom Jones poster. All right on, mate, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, cool. Cool indeed. Are you Harry Styles? Uh-oh, busted. <laughs> I am, actually. How'd you know? Ah, uh, you came in asking for Harry Styles. And you're wearing a blouse. Oh, very cool, mate. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but uh, where'd you go? Seems a bit silly. Is this a prank? You're hiding under the desk. Is Taylor setting me up again? <laughs> no, this isn't a prank. Please leave. I'll call the police if you don't leave right away. Whoa, of course. I'm so sorry. I just, you know, oh, I didn't mean it to be like this. 911, hello, cops. Uh, there's a desperate pop star stalking me, and he will not leave. Okay, okay, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. Hey guys, sorry to report, I couldn't get my hands on the magic Fast and Furious strain. I know you want it real bad, man, but my guy's working on it, I promise. I don't accept that, Burno Benny. You've been teasing my ass with some Fast and Furious excitement for a long, long time. Too long. Interesting. So you could say that the Fast and Furious has been maybe dragged out a little too long? Like, it's like... It just keeps going, stop. even though it's stupid and should stop. You want to do this now? If so, let me know. I'll flick your nuts so hard that they'll split like a cashew. You want that heat? Maybe. Get Fast and Furious out of your damn mouth. P-Walk. Yeah, like I said, working on it, man. <laughs> I do have this one, though, that might tickle your funny bone. It's called YouTube Weed. Ah, damn it. YouTube weed? That sounds awesome. 
Yeah, man, so with this one, you just take one magic puff and this will transform you into the world of YouTube history. Uh, wild ride, man. I went yesterday. I had diarrhea, too, but not sure that's part of it. No biggie. I always have diarrhea. God damn it. What's your problem? I don't want to do this. YouTube's dumb, man. I want to go on a car chase. Or go into outer space. Or some other shit, you know? That... You just don't know how deep the talent pool is on YouTube. Trust me, Ellis. You're going to have a blast. <laughs> YouTube is all cheap-ass white dudes pretending to be other cheap-ass white dudes talking about cheap-ass shit. Am I allowed to be offended by all that? Because, boy, that was sure offensive to someone like me. Stop that. No. I'll go. Just shut up. Thought so. Awesome. Let's do it. We're flying on the couch. Pretty cool, actually. Told you, Ellis. I'm so excited. I wonder who we'll meet first. Ooh. Whoa! We're in the original nerd room. There he is! This looks like Bad Wayne's World. Oh, look, there's a cheap ass white dude. That's the angry video game nerd. He's internet history. Shitty games! Oh, how I hate these shitty games! Wait, who the fuck are you two buffalo turds? Hi, big fan. My name is James. Weird. So is mine. Nice glasses. Thanks, you too. Want to see me take a giant horse dump on this copy of Rygar? Yeah. No. Let's go, Rugburn. That was so fun, Ellis. It wasn't, though. Maybe I can just keep flying out here while you're visiting these mid-ass suburb people. Hang in there. I promise the next one won't be a lame-ass white dude. God damn it. Holy shit, that's the nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Hey, Doug, a uh, big fan of your work. To boldly flee, underrated as fuck. What does this dude do? Doo-doo. Where the angry video game nerd reviewed bad video games from our past, the nostalgia critic reviews bad movies. He also had a few other famous YouTubers under his wing, like Lindsay Ellis. I got canceled for comparing Raya the Last Dragon to the movie The Last Airbender. I also hate that I ever worked for this mid-ass white boy. All right, she gets it. And we also have comic book reviewer and light bringer himself, Linkara. I also hate that I work for this mid-ass white boy. Bruh, you are one. And I hate myself. Hi, I'm Quentin Reviews. I like Garfield and iCarly. Is this the shit that you enjoy watching? Like, for real? Uh, yeah. Sorta. No wonder you can't appreciate a Fast and Furious film. Film? Shut the fuck up, dude. Look, I gotta get off this thing. I'm not doing this shit anymore with you. Then jump off the couch if you hate it so much. Into the black, endless void? Fuck that shit. Then change your attitude. Whatever. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why in the sweet fuck? Just let me explain. That right there is Filthy Frank, one of the most innovative performers in YouTube history. Why does he look like that? Because he's a total character, he pushed boundaries unlike anyone before. He knew what was acceptable and what wasn't acceptable and just pushed it beyond absolute extremes. What the fuck does any of that mean? He did pranks, basically. Hi, let's dance. God damn, why does he sound like a gremlin? Classic filthy Frank. Who's the cop? That's iDubbbz. Dressed as his character, the content cop. He made videos that put other YouTubers in their place, like Ricecom and Leafy is here. What are these dumb fucking names? Leafy is here? iDubbbz is a cuck. Oh, welcome to Drama Alert. Leafy, my boy, what's going on? Did you just call Ian a cuck? Well, yeah, just look at him, Keemstar. If I may, he has no chin, Keem. And you're a popcorn-eating garden gnome. This magic trip brought to you by G Fuel. Ooh, I can't take much more. Get me out of this motherfucker. Okay, Ellis, I will admit, YouTube drama can get a little overwhelming. The worst is behind us, I promise. Oh, shit. Who are those kids, dog? Uh, Fred and JoJo. Oh, God. <laughs>
Oh my god, man. What the fuck are we doing here still? Let's go home. Like I said, Ellis, feel free to jump at any time. Fuck you. Hey guys, welcome to the Needle Drop. Hey, yeah, we're, we're Rugburn and Ellis. We own a record store. Great. You want to chill out a little bit and listen to some music? Oh, what's this now? A good YouTube channel? All right, let's stay here for a bit. Agreed. How did you enjoy the new Abstraction album? Oh, uh, abst- Abstraction? Uh, yeah, haven't had a chance to quite, you know, listen to the to the whole thing. Just, you know, but from what I heard, you know. How about the new solo debut by Bethany Cassettino? Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, um, haven't, we haven't heard that one yet. Uh, okay, that's cool, but you must have heard the new one from Jesse Lanza. Phew, that was getting awkward. (laughs) I will say this, this couch is awesome. (laughs) Like, I wish we had this couch anytime someone got weird and like we could just be whisked away. How nice would that be? Do you think if I jump off this couch, I fall forever? Or just like a few feet onto the floor? Rubburn. Did you hear me? Did you hear my question? I need to know more information about the floor, Rubburn. Yeah, I heard you. I don't know. Uh, I think we're almost done, though. Uh, who are you? Why does she have a ukulele, dog? God, she ain't gonna play it, is she? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know who this is. God, it's giving me like a clown vibe, like... Like a sad clown vibe. Like, what are we doing? What are we gonna do? What is she gonna do? All aboard! I wasn't trying to bang those kids. No, nope, that's it for me, everyone. All right, later. Uh-oh. What is it? Lizzo. What about Lizzo? She got canceled. What? For what? Uh, she was mean to her dancers. Called them fat. Uh, she made them touch a stripper, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. And is that even that bad? I mean, it'd be like if you called me ugly. Wait, what was that now? Lizzo calling those dancers fat? Is like me calling you ugly. Yep. Is that correct? Yep. I wish you would get canceled. I can't be canceled, bro. I'm uncancelable. Anyway, we should probably take down that Lizzo poster that we have up. Damn. Quick justice for a fallen sister. Fun. If we take her black ass down, then we're taking down one of yours. If I have someone up that has been canceled or has done something to be canceled, then fine. Remove all you want. That's good. All right. Ryan Adams, huh? How about your boy? Didn't he make his wife quit music and harass her and shit? Allegedly, yeah. But, uh... I'll admit, Ryan has had a bit of a shady relationship with women, you could say. But, uh, if I'm being honest, his many masterpieces give him a pass. Bro, what'd you do, smoke the smart out of your brain? You can't have more than one masterpiece, motherfucker. You only get one. That's the point. And fuck that dude. All he do is write, like, sad-ass folk songs about trains and shit. Whoa, okay, fine. Well, I'll tell you this. I'm done looking at this R. Kelly poster every day. Later, pervert. That ain't R. Kelly, you racist goblin. It's Kendrick Lamar. Oh. Well, let's see what he did. I'm sure he did something. Oh, what the fuck? Dude, Beatles are canceled, bro. John Lennon beat his wife. Canceled. That's a garbage thing to do. I know. You should never hit a woman. He reset his whole life and became a better person after learning from his mistakes. He became a champion for women and equal rights. You can't just cancel someone because of something that they did when they were young. Unless it's Lizzo, right?
Wow. That was not bad, Ellis. <laughs> wow. All right. Maybe you're right, Ellis. You got me. Maybe I've been too quick to cancel people. Everyone deserves a chance to do better. If we would have canceled Lennon when he beat his wife, we'd have never gotten the masterpiece Imagine. Yeah, what if Imagine is like the fucking worst dude? Oh. <laughs> oh, look at this motherfucker. Did you know Fruit Loops are all the same flavor? I never thought about it. Ever. Are you serious? Does me not caring about cereal surprise you? Some of the loops are red. Some of the loops are green. There's blue loops and orange loops. Stop and... saying loops. Well, wouldn't you assume that the blue loops would taste different than the green ones? No, not really. I mean, wouldn't that be too hard? Like making different flavored ones? They'd probably be needing like a different vat or whatever. What are you a, a vat? Do you even know how cereal's made, Ellis? Why in the fuck would I? Hey, is that President Joe Biden? Hey, quick question. You know where I can find some Mario Speedwagon? Me and Toby from Hershey used to get all messed up. We'd start wrestling in the back of his mom's old place down by old 45s in your time. But back then in 83, things were a lot more freewheeling. I had a best friend that was black too. His name was former President Barack Obama. Yeah. Did you two vote for me? Uh, in 2020? Yeah. Kinda had to, didn't we? Not a lot of options. That's by design. Real good. Yeah. I used to like to find Maxie. She was a girl I used to know. We used to ride over to God. It's good to go. Oh, she was all oh, gone. Yeah, I was like that for going days. My life is a movie. Anyway, my point is, if they're already making the loops different color, why not make them different flavors as well? I overheard you talking about the colors. Is that what you want to be called now? Nope. We used to throw that word around in Scranton when Coco Bean Herald would come rolling in on a pair of stolen roller skates. That cat was fucking wild, man. Absolutely fucking wild. Yeah, we do not want to be called colored, Mr. President. Real good. Yeah, Jack. Hey, President Biden. Call me Waterbed Joe. Hey, President Biden, did you know the Loops and Fruit Loops were not the same flavor? Malarkey! Hey, you remind me of an old fella I used to hang out with. Coco Bean Harold. That dude was fucking wild. Do you think maybe you're too old to run for president? Oh no, has tragedy struck? Hey, it's California Senator Kamala Harris. Weird. I haven't seen you in years. What have you been up to? P hey, Ellis. Sloppy Joes are back at White Castle. They pay you to say that? What? No. I just saw the sign earlier and remembered how much you wanted to have them the last time. But you missed your chance, remember? Because it was only available for a limited time. The more you talk, the more it sounds like a commercial. Why? That limited time part. So? So? It's, it's fake. It's commercial talk. It's like when people say zesty. No one says zesty, but they always say in commercials. Zesty? Yeah, zesty. Whatever. Let's move on. Yeah, I was going to say. Anyway, between now and 5 p.m., you can get a four-pack of White Castle Signature Sloppy Joes for only 75 cents apiece. You heard me right. 75 cents apiece but only while supplies last, and only at participating White Castle restaurants. Get the fuck out of here with that restaurant part. Huh. That's weird. What's weird? Justin Long just liked a comment of mine. I wrote on a Kevin Smith post, and Justin Long liked it. Which one he be? Is he the one with the face tattoo? Nope. Then I don't know him. Yeah, you do know him. He was the nerdy kid in Dodgeball, remember? Rip Torn throws the wrenches at him. 
if he can dodge a wrench, he can dodge a dodgeball, right? Yeah, it was a good movie. Remember that movie? Yeah, that movie was awesome. Ben Stiller's absolute peak. Anyway, Justin Long was in it, and uh, he's now mostly in horror movies. Uh, you remember Jeepers Creepers? Yep, yep, I remember. Yeah. Uh, he's also in that new one with the big naked woman in the tunnels. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. He plays a real good asshole, that dude, Justin Long. Yeah. Yeah, he's super cool, and he just liked my comment. <laughs> what comment? Well, uh, it's a Kevin Smith post, so it was like a thing about his theater that he owns, and he was needing cash, and he was having a fundraiser thing, so I commented. Um, so you're not going to really get take it out of context. You're not going to understand this, but um, I wrote... It's a quote from their movie. I said, you should offer to tongue Jay's bung. Nasty ass. On Facebook you wrote that shit? Well, yeah. It's it's not like it's a full-on post. I didn't, like, put it on my feed or whatever. Obviously, it's just, a, it's just a joke from Silent Bob and Jay, and it was just a comment. I was just quoting Kevin Smith on a Kevin Smith yeah, Everyone can see that, though, right? All the people that follow you can see that shit. Hear right? me now, Ellis. Hear me now. I stopped giving a shit. About everyone a long time ago, Ellis. I write whatever I want on Facebook. And if the squares can't handle it, then the squares can't... They uh, they don't have to follow me. Fuck them. Yeah, it's Facebook, dog. Y'all squares. Yeah, anyway, it's cool that he liked my comment, is the point. Wait, hold on. You think Justin Long, who has been in a bunch of big movies, just liked your comment about licking some dude's asshole? Yeah, he did. It says so here. Does he have a check mark? No. But he has like nine and a half thousand followers, and his posts seem legit. It's like everyday celeb stuff. He seems like he'd have maybe more than nine thousand followers, don't he? Yeah, but it's Facebook. Do celebs even like care about Facebook anymore? I can see there being wait, he wrote me a reply. Write to me in message. He just asked you to slide into his DMs, dog. Yeah, he did. Uh, people have said that he and I kind of look alike. Who said that? Nobody. Says out in his IMBD, he made Tusk with Kevin Smith. Exactly. So that's the connection. That's why he would have been in his comment section, I guess. I don't know. Right? I think this is him. Hey, Justin. I have been a huge fan ever since the show Ed. Looking forward to Goosebumps as well. Celebs like it when you mention their current work. Thanks for saying hello. Send. That's a good message, right? It's not too weird. Thinking that you're talking to a Hollywood celebrity is pretty fucking weird. Well, all the evidence Some. points to the conclusion that this is, is maybe legit him. Probably okay. not. I think. Doubtful. Could very well be him. Most likely a scam. If it's not him, then how did he get 9,500 followers as a fake and not have the real Justin Long take him down? Like, that's a lot of people still, right? Yeah, I don't know. But somehow, I know that he fake as a motherfucker. There's no check mark, dog. Yeah, that's true. But if he's scamming me, what's the scam? It's the same as every other scam, dude. He's stealing your shit. But how? How can Justin Long steal my shit? Oh, he wrote back. Wow, I appreciate. This is my private account, which I use to get close to my active fans and other close friends, okay? I created this page to appreciate all my fans because I've been losing a lot of followers on my Instagram account, and I want to appreciate y'all for your great support. What in the AI-generated robot fuck is all that about? Yeah, I don't know. Why is he telling a random fan about his Instagram woes? It says here that he's doing fine on Instagram. This guy is a scam, dude. Yeah, I think you're right, Ellis. But what is the scam? You know what, I'm just gonna write him something just to end it. Sorry to hear about Instagram. Good luck to ya. There, nice and polite. I'm not some fool about to get scammed. Yeah, that's real smart. Make sure you don't follow him on nothing, okay? No, I won't. Oh, he just replied. Jesus. I really appreciate, brother. Hope you have watched most of my movies, and which of them is your favorite? 
I hope you have watched most of my movies, and which of them is your favorite? Yeah, totally a normal human message. Dear fake Justin Long, I do not know why you are pretending to be beloved American actor Justin Long, and how that could win you any fortune, but I am no fool, and you will not fool me. I am next going to write to the real Justin Long on Instagram, where I will inform him about you and your counterfeit page. So long, fake long. Now on Instagram. Dear Justin Long, I have encountered a fake Justin Long page on Facebook. Just wanted you to know. They are sending out messages as you, asking people their favorite films of yours, which is pretty tacky and not something you'd ever do, I'm sure. Anyway, I'm a huge fan. Have been since the show ed. Have a great day. Thanks for the heads up. Send me a picture of your credit card, front and back. That'd be so cool. Hey, Ellis, do you ever dream of being white? Do you want to be slapped in the face or punched in the stomach? No, no, I just worded it wrong. I was just curious if you ever have dreams where you're all of a sudden a white guy. Yeah, I do actually. But those be nightmares, dog. Why is it a nightmare being white? A few months ago I had one where I was at my family reunion on my ma's side. And all the Jones relatives started pointing and laughing at me. And when I checked myself, I was just some white dude with a tiny micro dong. We don't all have micro dongs. That's a stereotype, Ellis, and not an accurate one anymore. Not anymore? What, some change in the last couple of years? Yeah, we have bigger dongs now. It's called evolution. Anyway, sometimes I'm black in my dreams. Oh, are you now? Yeah. You know how in dreams sometimes you're being chased in slow-mo quicksand and you can't, like, get anywhere? Well, when I'm black in my dream, I'm able to nope my way out of any bad situation and... I can run like the wind. Well, maybe you're just fast in your dream. Maybe you're not black at all. I also have a massive penis. Oh, there you go. All right, yeah. I bet you have a lot of fun with that. I do, Ellis. Sometimes I just hold it. Hello, my name is Hector, and I am in charge of sudden event coordinator duties for Miss Jennifer Lopez. J-Lo? Yes, and Miss Lopez is making a sequel to her 2024 hit film, This Is Me, dot, 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 now. And we would like to film inside your store for a scene. What's the sequel called? This Is Me, dot, 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 now, dot, 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 like for real. Yeah, that's fine, but we're about to close for lunch in a bit, so can you tell her to hurry? Excuse me? Did you tell Miss Jennifer Lopez to hurry? Yeah. Like, we're going to Blue Ox Sandwiches down in Burnsville. They have a super good meatloaf hoagie. But it's like 20 minutes away, so... Look, look, do you want to have two-time Oscar presenter and Grammy green dress wearer Miss Jennifer Lopez in your record store or not? Yeah, I used to want to hit that like 25 years ago. Bring her in. I want to get a close look. Oh, if she comes in, Miss Lopez cannot be seen... Wait, was that now we can't look at her? Miss Lopez prefers to not have the staff look directly at her, as it makes her feel uneasy. The gaze of the commoners make her break out into hives. So if we can't make eye contact with her, then how do we, like, help her find an album or whatever? Or ring her up? What, do we have to be blindfolded or something? Well, this is pretty fucking stupid, isn't it? It sure is. Miss Jennifer Lopez has won several MTV Music Video Awards. When she asks you where she can find her last album, tell her this very line, okay? Listen. Say, it's over in the bestseller section, Miss Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, we don't have a bestseller section. And we sure as shit don't got no J-Lo. Don't worry, we have that covered. Okay, remember, never take off your J-Lo blinds and only say the words, It's over in the bestseller section, Miss Jennifer Lopez. Say it to me now. Say what? Say the line. It's over in the re- new releases, J-Lo. It's over in the bestseller section. Okay, you must say that. And it's Miss Jennifer Lopez. Just like that, okay? And don't look at her. Okay, got it. 
Oh, wow, yeah. This place reminds me of when I was 14 in the Bronx. Crazy hair, causing trouble with the local gangs and stuff, if you know, you know. Just being Jenny from the block. Hey, guys, do you have the latest Jennifer Lopez album? Oh, oh, all the eyes. No, 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 no. Oh, no. I oh, no. Oh, hey, thanks a lot. That's wicked awesome, you guys. Appreciate it. Pine vinyl!